Thank you, Brother Carson. Really yeah. nice to meet you. The Lord bless you. Good evening, friends. Now, before we sit down, let's just speak to the great King that we're all here to worship. Our Heavenly Father, we are grateful for the opportunity to be back again in this great city, Chicago, to be assembled here with those who are waiting for the coming of the Lord Jesus. And we pray, Father, as our efforts has been put forth uh, in both the men and women, boys and girls, to see a revival or stirring, maybe to call in a few more that's left out in the city. May this be that great time that when the last will be called in before the judgment sh strikes this country. Father, we believe that there's still more waiting and we're hunting for them. Send them in this time, Father, granted, that they might receive Christ and be numbered among those elected that will be taken away in a great rapture that lays in the future. Grant it, Lord, these efforts that we put forth and has been put forth for our brother Carlson and all of them here, that this place that they have converted from an old whiskey house and a wrestling arena unto a house of the Lord. Amen. Lord, may it be a memorial and a representation of the conversion of sinners to Christ. Hear us, Father, in these things, healing the sick and doing these great things that we ask for. It's in the name of Jesus Christ and for his honor and glory we ask it. Amen. And be seated. <clears throat> Thank you very much. It's always a privilege to come to Chicago. I've always felt that way. I uh, haven't been here for some time because I don't live here no more. Uh, I live in Arizona, uh, in Tucson. And we're here in Jeffersonville on the uh, summer's vacation, and I leave here on Monday morning, and as soon as I arrive home, things are waiting to go back to Tucson again. And But I'm here making tapes, messages that I send away on tapes and the Lord has been blessing us Sunday morning we had a four hour message <laughs> I don't expect to do that here <laughs> but four hours on the three full revelation of Jesus Christ being the God's hidden secret from the foundation of the world and the Lord certainly blessed us we've had great blessings and God has healed the sick among us a few about three weeks ago while I was speaking a man standing before us is he's a, an Englishman his wife is Norwegian she's a very fine nurse and he a very fine man and so the man I was speaking of a complexes and the man kind of resented it when I said it and I told him a couple years ago when I first met him that he was bothered with a murmur in his heart he hardly wanted to believe that, I think, at first, and then finally the doctor told him he had the murmur in his heart. And that morning he had kind of been a little tore up, and when I said that he resented it and quickly dropped dead right on the floor, fell out in the floor, and his wife got down to examine him and he was gone, and I had to quieten the audience and then step off the platform, got down to where he was, took his pulse, there was no pulse, and his eyes, you know, when the heart stops, the eyes flies backwards, and um, tried to pull his eyes to see him in that condition, and um, knew he was gone, and the Lord Jesus said, speak. And I said, Lord Jesus, give him back his life. He looked up at me and said, Brother Branham, and he's alive tonight, and he'll probably attend this meeting. He's been attending him right along, and uh, he will probably, I don't see him here tonight. Mr. Way, are you here? I, I don't. Why, well, sitting right here in front of me, right, right, right here in front of me. I didn't know that. And now here he is tonight, very healthy. Would you just stand up so the people can see that God can raise the dead from, from it? And his wife, a fine Norwegian nurse, and praising the Lord. And, 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 and. Is your lovely little wife with you? She's gone to attend for the attend the sick. His wife is a very lovely person who tries to take care of the sick that's in her heart. She nurses constantly, and she's tending to some of the sick in the back now. And um, so we're so grateful to the Lord. Now, 
I, coming in, heard Brother Vail speak just before me, and I'll try each night to get out real early, as early as I possibly can. And I'll be praying for the sick, and just as the Lord will lead, and asking God to bless Brother uh, Carlson and all the group here in Chicago that's waiting for the coming of the Lord. Maybe a little later on in the week, I might tell you a vision I had this morning, a little after daylight, just as I started to come up here concerning this. And maybe sometime when I get a little more time during the week, of the Lord willing. Now, uh, how many share that's never been in one of the meetings before? Let's see your hands. It's never been in one of the meetings. Well, well, we're happy to have you here in this uh, little uh, tabernacle tonight. And in this arena where I think it was once used for wrestling, wasn't it, boxing and so forth? I remember I preached here not long ago in Vincennes, Indiana, or Evansville, Indiana, rather, where I went into Golden Gloves as a, a kid, and then I got to fight in professional fights as a boy. And I won 15 straight professional fights, and I lost one, and that was by a draw in Evansville, Indiana, and in the same arena. Where I had fought this man, I went back preaching the gospel. I said, now I'm fighting not my brother, but the devil has been binding my brother. <laughs> and so here we are tonight, and the place is converted from trying to bind one another by wrestling knots and trying to tie the devil in such a knot by the scripture that he can't get out of it until he takes the count. That's right. And now we pray that the Lord will help us do this. Uh, just again now, would there be any, just before we read the word, like to be remembered in prayer, just raise your hand. I know it's hot in here tonight, and that's the reason we'll hurry. And remember, come back tomorrow night, and that's Wednesday night, Thursday night, Friday night, and I think Saturday morning, I've seen it on the list for the businessman's breakfast, Saturday morning, Saturday night, Lane Tech High School, and Sunday Sunday afternoon and Sunday night here. Let us let's into this all right. Yes. Can you hear that better? Is that that's fine. All right. So I remember to stay to this sign. Now let's bow our heads. Now, Heavenly Father, as we are approaching this hour where man and women has to make a choice. We realize that we will not be able to go out of this building the same as we come in. We can never enter the house of the Lord and go out the same, go better or worse. Grant, Lord, that we can go out tonight better than we was coming in. And these few words, these texts, scriptures that I have written down here for our little message tonight. May it be to the honor of Christ. May his people in hearing it receive faith. For truly we believe we're living in the last hours of the last day. The sun has been setting for quite a while. God's long suffering has held it up. It's, the shadows are gathering now. And we pray, God, that you'll let us realize this more than ever before in life. Bless those people who raise their hands. Forgive our sins. Give us faith in thy word and the coming of thy Son. For we ask it in his name and for his glory. Amen. Um, just a moment. There's a lady way back in the back that's fainted, I believe it is, and she's sick. Let us just pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, thy Son, may the power that raised that young man that night and sat all night long listening to Paul preach, may the same power that raised him up to health again, may it do likewise for this our sister who faded perhaps because of the heat and is back there sick let the Holy Spirit Lord of life come up on her and strengthen her mortal life grant this Lord we commit it to you now in the name of Jesus Christ thy son amen let me hear from you it gets worse I'll go back. 
Now over in the book of St. John, the 12th chapter and the 32nd verse, I wish to read for a little portion of scripture, just in a way of make a text to build a context. And I do see that it's difficult for you to hear me. I can tell the way you're acting. A rebound in, in the building. And I'll try to speak this as plain as I can. I want to read this text. Jesus speaking. Then I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. I want to take this for a text. There is only one one way provided by God for anything. One way God has provided to meet everything. Now, any other way besides this way would be a perverted way to God. God can only have one way to do anything. His first way is always the only way that he can ever do it. For God making a choice or a decision must forever remain with that decision. And if he changes that decision for a better way, then it shows that God is not God. He's not infinite. He found something better than he knew at the first place. He, he doesn't change. He makes his ways perfect. His words are perfect. And any way that takes away or adds to anything that God has provided is wrong. I believe in the last book of the Bible called the Revelations. It's written, if any man shall add one word or take a word from it, it is saying that his part will be taken from the book of life. Now, therefore, God has made a way, and a perfect way, and we must walk right with it, not trying to make it any better, not trying to take anything away from it, inject anything, or take anything from it. We must take it just the way that God has placed it. Anything else is wrong. Even in the book of Genesis, the beginning, God said in Genesis 1, talking about nature, he said, let every seed bring forth of its kind. Every seed must keep in its kind. Now, to change that would be to do something God said not to do. And now we find out, and now look at man, what he's done by crossing God's way of life. We want to take this for a background to say what I want to say to you about the Lord Jesus. See, when man, when God made a seed, he made it perfect. And now man has tried to inject something to that seed. For instance, today coming up, I noticed in southern Indiana and all up through Indiana and along, there were what we said, hybrid corn. And what a fine big ear that corn is, but it isn't any good. It looks better, but it isn't better. It's absolutely no good at all. And we find out that by high-breeding chickens, we find, did you ever try to eat fried chicken in these days? Well, you can't hardly do it. It, it smells and tastes just like, uh, I mean, it tastes like a chicken smell. So what is it? There's 800 people laying sick in Jeffersonville, Louisville, and New Albany now from eating eggs from hybrid chickens. See, they've taken the chicken and breed it in different ways. And then another thing, they are getting to a place where they spray with this uh, mosquito stuff and get this DDT. The chickens and animals pick that up. We're certainly living in the last day. They are breeding different things together, crossing over, and it makes a uh, uh, a product that's no good. Through doing this, I was reading in a medical journal, I believe it was, and then in Reader's Digest, of how that it's changed the course of life for people. It's even perverting man and women. That men are becoming more like women and women like man. Men are becoming uh, a sissy. 
and, and women are becoming masculine. It's hybrid stuff. You see that cell that we eat from this animal that's hybrid is actually not the right cell for us. Therefore, in doing that, see that cell from the animal or the cell from the wheat or from the corn, it's not the right cell. In order to let this grow look like vigor, it has to be sprayed all the time. Now, a genuine plant, a good, healthy plant does not have to be sprayed at all. No bugs will bother it because it has a repellent itself that it puts out that keeps all the bugs off of it. Now, that's God's way. What brought sickness into the world was sin. When man dropped away from God's provided way, he opened himself to ever devil there was, to sickness and so forth, because he has to keep medicine and sprayed, and it's just each generation inbreeding into another. Now, you might be a Christian, and your wife might be a Christian, but the genes of your body is still the inheritance from your father and your grandfather, and on down, as Daniel said, each generation will get weaker and wiser. And it's got the whole race, the whole human race dying. Just think, a few years ago, you never heard of anybody getting hurt playing baseball. Now they have to use a helmet to bat with. They kill so many every year. You hit the man, he's so soft, he's like a guinea pig. He just dies right now. And you notice, again, they used to like this boxing. I believe it was Bob Fitzsimmons and Carbett fought 125 rounds. Now, two to ten rounds, and then you have to work on them for a month to get them back to life again. And then they fought bare-fisted. And now we got a feather bed around our, our hands when we fight. And now they're going to have to stop the game is because you're, every time you hit one, it nearly kills you. And you see, you, it's, it's the whole race is gone. There's not a hope left. Everything is at its end. Cattle, corn, everything. Now, you cannot take a plant that's been planted and hybrided into something to bring it back again and plant it. It will not do it. It will not reproduce itself. It can't. Because God's commandment still stands the same. Every seed must bring forth of its kind. If it isn't, it's a hybrid seed with a perverted life, and it will soon die. You plant a hybrid corn, it will get up just about to where the ear should set in it, and it'll turn yellow and go back. Now, that's the same way that they have did it through animals, they've did it through seeds, they've did it through everything else, and they've did it in the church. It's trying to make a prettier church, a better place, a, a beautiful thing, great things. They've hybrid it by mixing it with some kind of man-made doctrines and so forth, and it gets up to the Word where it can reproduce itself again and dies again. See? And there's... You just simply, there's one way to do anything, and that's God's way. Amen. And outside of that, it's all off because it will not reproduce itself again. I've got scriptures for these things to prove that it's to be here in the last days. When I heard that egg situation the other day, I went back in my book where the Lord spoke to me in 1931. And there I had written in my book, In the last days, warn the people not to eat eggs or live in a valley. You see, not know what fallout and things would be. See, but yet the Lord forewarned that way back 30 years ago. See, not to live in a valley in the last days and don't eat AIDS. Everything will be poisoned. See, and that's just what's happened. I imagine that 30 something years ago. God's word is the seed. Jesus said so. That the word of God was a seed that a sower sowed. And this is the only seed that will produce eternal life. Now, we can have all other kinds of lives, but life, church life, home life, family life, national life, but the only eternal life comes through God's Word. That's, that's the only seed that can produce eternal life. And now, they are trying to they interbreed this with creed, but some creed some denominational sticker or something on it. And what they have did by doing this, it's got the church to a place where it grows up to a place to, to where it ought to be receiving the seed, the real word, and it's a hybrid condition. He'll fall back to his denominational teaching and leave the real word of God alone. Therefore, 
We are at the end time. Yes. There is not one hope left. We cannot build upon this nation. This nation is based upon politics. Politics is finished. There, it's just as corrupt as it can be. When you, you read a Life magazine where this uh, attorney or, or this uh, uh, judge, his son, a boy, is so hard on racing these rippies and so forth out here, these hot rods, and his boy killed a big bunch of people, a little, ba- a little boy, a little baby boy, and a bunch, and the judge set him free. Yeah. All a political play-up. See, national life's gone. Natural botany life is gone. It's so interbred and everything it has not life in it. Human life is a constant mess, and spiritual life is at the lowest ebb it's ever been. That's right. Amen. See, there is so hybrid. Everything bred in and added something to it to make it better this way. I tell you, even to our Pentecostal movement, yes. when we used to go down in old bar rooms like this and places, I was converted in a converted bar room. And I feel very much at home now. I look back there and see that counter and so forth. is a little colored church where I received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. was led there by the Lord. Now, to see these kind of places... They, they don't want to, they got to have the big flowery name behind it. It's got to have so much behind it or people won't, it's got to be so pretty outwardly. Yeah. Until, if it, it isn't that way, then the people don't want nothing to do with it. That's right. But watch the word of the Lord. Yeah. Now, God's got a way of doing things and we must do it in the way that he wants it done. If it isn't, then it's not effective. Jesus found something like it when he come in his day. He said, you by your traditions has made the, the word of God of non-effect by your traditions. See, they had hybrid into, injected into God's commandments their own traditions which made the commandments of no effect. Today, I know it's become the same thing. There is not a thing left, my Christian friend, but the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the only hope that the church has. Amen. As far as it comes, if it ever takes up a denomination again, it's finished. Because every denomination finished when it become a denomination. It's the very thing, I'll say something here I maybe ought to say, but yet I believe I ought to say it. If you notice, Lucifer is exactly doing the same thing today that he did at the beginning. See, Lucifer at the beginning wanted to build himself a kingdom which was greater and more beautiful than Michael's kingdom, Christ. He, that was his ambitions to achieve something like that. And what did he get to do it by? He took fallen angels who lost their first estate. He took that to do it with. And today, Lucifer has got into the church and taken away the word and rejected denomination, and he's building a church uh, uh, that ecumenical move that's going on now to unite all the Protestants together and all together come into Catholic and this Pope they got in now to do the same thing exactly what the scriptures said it would do and what's he doing it by? He's doing it by man of uh, those great ecumenical moves who does not know God and the many of them in the Pentecostals because they're doing the same what is it? He's doing it with fallen angels Amen. Fallen Lutherans, fallen Methodists, fallen Pentecostal, and lost their original estate from the Word of God and going right back to and make a great big Fallen messengers, messengers who once stayed with the Word but sold out their birthrights and joined in with the world. The same thing is at the last day, and their Lu- and Lucifer is achieving today by man with those spirits in them that he did with angels at the beginning. Fallen angels who kept not their first estate to obey God. And he's doing the same thing today. Oh, you'll never find any way, any way at all. I don't care if you're in a bar room or you're on the street or wherever you are. God's provided way for man to come to Christ. And receive eternal life. Jesus said, I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. That's yeah. God's only way. If I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He said in St. John, the 14th chapter, the 12th verse, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. 
God's provided way. Mark 16 said, These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. If they should take up serpents or drink anything, it wouldn't harm them. They'll lay their hands on the sick and they shall recover. The very things that Christ did, that's he was God's word made manifest. He was God's promise vindicated. He was, he was God in a flesh form. The Bible said that God was in Christ, that great Jehovah that created heavens and earth was made manifest in a body, the Lord Jesus. And in that one man, he could achieve to, he tried it through Moses and he did it in Jacob and he did it in Joseph, but he come in his fullness in the man Christ. He was the fullness of the Godhead bodily where God could express himself. And he said, who can accuse me of sin? Sin is unbelief. If I haven't done exactly what the scripture said I would do, then who can condemn me and say, we're a fail in one way. See, it's God's provided way. And Christ, the just one, had to die in order to produce eternal life by his blood, giving his blood cell that he might give us eternal life. That's God's provided way. There has never been anything that ever beat God's way on anything. I don't care what it is. If people just don't try to inject their own ideas, but just take it the way God said, believe it. See, it seems to be so hard for man just to get out of his own ideas. Just, he's got to have something to do into it himself. He's always gummed up, if you excuse the expression, he's always gummed up God's way for him, but injecting his own way into it. Have they ever, do you think they could find a better way for a chicken to be born than to peck its way out of the shell? I just wonder if you could find any better way. No, sir. He's born with a little peep on the end of his little bill, and every time his little head nods back and forth, amen, 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 he scratches that shell till he scratches himself out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I believe it. Yes, sir, you'll never find a better way because that is God's provided way. Now, what if you had the little peep on his bill, and you said, poor little chicky, you know, I'm going to get a better way for you. I'm just going to crack the shell and pick you out. It'll kill him. Amen. That's right. You die, he wouldn't live. He's got to do that in order to build his strength, enough to receive the air and things when he comes out. If he, he's provided with the two, he's got that little peep, you've seen it, little birds and chicken. And as he nods his little head, he scratches that egg back and forth until he peeps his way out. If you'll take that as an example, or in a way of making a point, that's God's way for Christians to be born. Not walk up the altar and give a man your right hand and put your name on the book, but get down there and peep and cry and beg and plead and know God gives you strength and you come forth out of the shell of the world. If somebody, pastor, just cracks the shell and takes you out and says, oh, well, that's all right, we'll take you in anyhow, you're dead. That's all there is to it. You've got to come God's provided way. Amen. That's the way the rest of them had to come, by being born of the Spirit of God. Stay there until, how long? Until. He told them, first groups of Pentecostals, to tarry in the city of Jerusalem until. Don't make any words, one day, five days, nine days, or whatever it was, stay there until they are filled with the Spirit. Until they're born again. Ducks and geese, they have never found a way for ducks and geese to, to get ready to come south from the north here. Then... God's provided way for them to swarm. Some time ago, I had a great lesson on that. I was down in Texas, and I noticed I was going down the road, and traffic was stopped for most a half a mile. And I said to someone, what's the matter? He said, the geese is all across the road. <laughs> well, finally, when I got up there, you couldn't hear yourself think. They were having a revival. They were all getting ready for a flight. They were going home, going up north to their house where they could raise some little ones. And they were having a revival swarming before going. Now, that's God's provided way. A swarm. All of them get together. One was way over here and one way over there and one way over somewhere else. 
one in one rice paddy and one in a wheat field, but something or another, some way, on a certain day, I don't know why, how, but on a certain day, here they all come together. This was like something draws them. We call it instinct. It's a God-given yes. instinct Glory. of get together before the flight. You see what God's trying to do now? Pull his church from one side to yes. the other to get the revival, time revival like the geese has always done. Yes. Now, what if they tried another way? Said, well, now we'll just take it another way. They never get there. No, sir. What if you say, well, I'll tell you what, we'll make a better way for them. We'll herd them all into a coop and take them up in a coop, put them in a little chicken coop or make it a duck coop or a goose coop or whatever you want to do it and put them into that and then take them up there. Do you think that would be a better way? Say, oh, we can give them, oh, I tell you, we could feed them better along the road. No, you couldn't. There's such grain that's in the ponds and in the fields, weeds and things that they have to get in order to give them strength to be what they are when they get there. They, if they didn't get that, they, wouldn't be, they couldn't raise their young ones. They wouldn't be genuine ducks. They'd be hybrids like we are, see, if they had to take that. But God's got a way of, of doing it. Put them in a coop. You know what them ducks know right now? Put them in a denomination like that. They know that they were ready for the slaughter. That's all. That's what you do when you put them together. In a coop, they're going for the slaughter. The ducks got better sense than we got on that. When you go to cooping them all up together in man-made a prison, well then, you see, the duck knows he hasn't got his freedom to fly in the air and do as God provided for him to do and put him in a coop, then he, he's gone. That's all. You coop them when they're slaughtered, and the duck knows better. We ought to know. Neither can you choose them a better route to go, a route, if you want to call it, up here, I think. Down home in the south is still route. But up here, I think they call it a route. Do you think if you could say, now listen, I'll tell you what you ought to do. You ought to go back a certain way and come down another way and down over this way. You think you could choose a better way for them to go than God's provided way for them to go? Well, you'd get them in some kind of a, a something, you'd draw them across there, some magnet or something. They'd never, you'd draw them through storms and through everything else. Half of them would be lost. Well, you can't give them a better way. They, they go God's provided way. They can set those storms miles away and know how to ground themselves and get ready for the storm and rise again. God's got a provided way for them, and they got duck sense enough to follow God's provided way. We don't. We try to make a better way than God made for us. See, we want to have something into it ourselves. A duck don't pay no attention to what he just goes the way God wants him to go, the way his ancestors did, the way his great, 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 great grandmother did, and all like that. If we just take our ancestry on back to Pentecost, we know how to get there. God had a provided way by his word and by his Holy Spirit. But we want to go some other way that Dr. So-and-so said, or a certain group of men got together and said, that's way off of God's provided way. The church sailed good in God's provided way to the council at Nicaea, Rome, and there's where they made their fatal mistake. What if you could take, and now you think about finding them a better way, or could you find them a better leader than God's provided leader for them? Now, maybe you take an old gander out here somewhere and take him out there and feed him on certain vitamins and so forth and give him a special call, you know, send him out there and put a little honker on his mouth and you might have a, a, a melody that he could almost yodel with that. And you might write up in all the papers a, a duck that can yodel. And all, all the ducks is bound to find him. He'll know which way to take him because he's really cultured and educated and he's fixed up. He can do it. You might, you might sit out there and you over all afternoon and there never be a duck come around him. My sheep know my voice. He might sound prettier. He might have better wings. He, he might be fed better. He might be a better cultured duck. He might be able to do the twist or anything out there. You couldn't tell what he could do, but I'm telling you, the ducks would never follow him if he didn't give that certain sound that was right. That's right. Ducks know their leader by God given sound, a yes. God-given instinct, and you'll never be able to get one any better than that, because that's God's actual provided way for them. And notice, again, if you trained an old goose or a duck to take that group, you'd probably take him right in a huddle of shotguns where people are watching for him. But you know, this God-provided leader takes him to God's provided place where he's got for him. He takes him right straight. Why? to Louisiana and down into the rice paddies where they're protected the rest of the year, 
Well, certainly, God knows what to do, and the duck knows to do what God wants him to do, or provided for him. Notice, could you think you could invent a better provided instrument than what God's got for him? Now, that little duck never left the pond. He was born up there in the North Woods. He never was off the pond in his life. But somehow he sails right up, can go east, west, north, south, whichever way he wants to go, but something constrains him to go right straight south, yes. tells him how to bypass the cold spells, the storms, and everything, and get out of it, right where the food is. God has an instrument in that duck yes. that leads him just exactly right, and they've never been able to find any better way for him. No, sir, than God's provided way. They... They have never been able to find a better way for a baby to get what he wants than to cry for. You might, you might tell him, well, he could, he could shake his little fist or he could goo like that, but he'll never get the attention like crying. He's got to cry for it, that's all. You might say, well, I'll put my alarm clock on and I've got to feed this baby at a certain time. So many minutes to so many, much time I've got to feed him. You turn that alarm clock on, stick the bottle in his mouth, he'll goo and spit it out. Put the milk in his mouth and he'll spit it out. It's not time yet, but God's got to provide a way. He turns a little alarm clock on down there. And when it is, he ain't going to stop until he gets his bottle. That's all. He cries for it. Now, God recommends this way also to his baby children. To cry, his believers to cry for what they want. That's right. Cry for him for your needs. Now, don't listen to intellectual speeches. Somebody said, well, now I'll tell you, this baptism of the Holy Spirit that they talk about, this divine healing, and that kind of stuff, well, I'll tell you, it isn't for, it isn't today. I can explain it, that it's not for today. Listen, a real genuine baby of God won't pay no attention to that. He'll scream and yell and kick up his heels until he gets a vindicated answer back from that promise out of God's word. Because man don't live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God proceeds from the mouth of God. He cries and cries until that word of promise is vindicated. God's little child living on the word of God. There's not a better way in the world for him. That's all. He lives on what the Lord says for him to live by. And he stays there until it happens. Cries, kicks up his heels, and just stays at it. Some of them say, oh, you can't receive the Holy Ghost. There is no such a thing. They tried to tell us that years ago. That there was no such a thing as speaking with tongues and yeah. prophecy and yeah. all these great gifts that God promised in the early church and gave to them. Them days has passed. You think that stopped that hungry-hearted people? They took a hold of this word and know that the Bible said, he, the promise isn't to you and to your children and to them that's far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. They stayed there on their faces and cried and begged and kicked up their heels and screamed until God poured out the same Holy Ghost upon them that he did on them at the beginning. Amen. 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 What is it? Amen. God's provided way. That's right. They believed it. And God provided the way for them. Peter given the provided way on the day of Pentecost. Some of them say, shake hands, be sprinkled, come into the church, this is it, that's that. God's got to judge the, church, the world by something. If he's going to judge it by the church, which church will it be? If he judges it by the Catholic church, which Catholic church? If he judges it by the Romans or Orthodox is lost. <laughs> and if they judge it by the Orthodox, the Greek Orthodox, then the others are lost. The judge it by the Baptist, the Methodist laws. Because you can't add one word or take one from it. See? So remember, one word, disbelieve, one word, caused every heartache, every sickness, every death, and even the coming of the Lord Jesus to die to redeem us. E, she disbelieved, just reasoned with Satan, or Satan reasoned with her. Well, that, honestly, God won't do it. See, that's Lucifer's business today. Say, God can't turn us down. We're two bigger people. We stand tens of thousands, millions strong. You think God could turn us down? He's sure he's already done it. When you reject his word, you're on the other side. That's right. It isn't God turned you down. You turned God down. That's what it's saying. See, you've got to take the bread of life. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by a few of the words. A word every now and then. By every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God, man shall live by that. And this scripture is written by the Holy Spirit. That's right. And the Holy Ghost is God. And ever this man moved a whole by the Holy Ghost wrote this Bible. 
And I believe every word of it is perfectly the truth of God and cannot be tampered with. And we'll be judged by this book at the end of, the, of life's journey. Yes, sir. I don't believe in intellectual speeches. I believe in the word itself. And then stay with that promise until it's made manifest and fulfilled. Then you've got it. What man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. I just think another day, the Bible said that the sins of Sodom vex the soul of Lot daily. I just thought, how many lots is there in this United States? Man sitting in their study, good man, sitting in their study, looking out the window and seeing these modern strip teases on the street and uh, carrying on the way there. They can't say nothing about it. They know it's wrong. They can't say nothing. Half their con- yeah, 90% of their congregation wear it. Bobbed haired women wearing shorts, man smoking cigarettes, taking sociable drinks, telling dirty jokes. They know better than to say that. Yeah. If they do, their denominational headquarters, they stir up something like that, they're excommunicated from it. See, a modern lot would not be a common audacity, not the real spiritual truth within them enough grace to stand that'll look upon sin and can't call it out. God give us some Abraham that'll separate themselves from these things. Right? Oh, at the day that we're living. Yes, sir. His word is always the truth. Always the truth. His believing children believe for it and cry for it until his word is vindicated. And his word is always his will. If you want to know what the will of God is, find it in the Bible. It's God's word. Anything contrary to it is perverted. And don't get into that hybrid condition. What God said, that's the truth. If somebody takes you and says, now, I come into the church, and I, oh, we don't believe in receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost. We don't believe that. We believe that you actually believe. When you believe, you receive the Holy Ghost. Paul said in Acts, the 19th chapter, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? Amen. Have you received the Holy Ghost? Well, how did you receive the Holy Ghost, you said? Peter said on the day of Pentecost, said, repent, every one of you. Be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. That's what he said. The promise is to you and to your children. It's like people reading the prescription on a medicine bottle and won't take the medicine. What good does it do to read the prescription? We go away to seminaries and learn uh, uh, church history, and we learn ethics of the church, and learn what the Bible says and all the Greek words, and we can tell you what it means. Yeah. But that's just tell you what the Bible says, what the direction says. I can tell you what Peter said on the day of Pentecost. I can tell you that the promise isn't to you. But you say, I believe that. I can be this medicine sitting here for the disease is right. But until I take it, I got to take it. See, the, the sincerity of it doesn't matter. Say, I sincerely believe that. That's true. But you got to take it. And when you take it, it shows the effects upon the patient. And when you take God's Word, it shows genuine Holy Ghost effects. Abraham's seed. It does something to you. It takes a hold of you. It shakes the unbelief out of you. It sets your affections on things above. Where Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. And he is the Word. In the beginning was the Word. The Word is with God. And the Word was God. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and the Word is still God. And if the Word be lifted up and you receive it into your heart, it'll draw you to God. That's right, because it is God. Amen. Oh, how I love you. Word's always the truth. Yes, sir, never a better way than God's provided way. There was a prophet one time by the name of Job. He needed needed some comfort, and he... His church members come and condemning him and saying, Job, you know, you, 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 you're just not right with God. And, and they condemned him. But he still needed a comforter. His wife couldn't even comfort him. She said, Job, you are to curse God and then die the death. But he said, thou speakest like a foolish woman. And Job stayed with it until God provided for him a vision of Jesus Christ. Now, you believe that? It said... When the vision come, he said, I know my Redeemer liveth. And at the last days he'll stand upon the earth. And though the skin worms destroys this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God, whom I shall see for myself, mine eyes shall behold enough. Now remember, the vision 
is he saw Jesus and Jesus is the Word. Then when Job needed a comforter, God sent him a vision of the Word. Amen. That's the comfort I get, is reading the Word. Reading the Word. What the Word said. Jesus said, let every man's word be a lie and mine be true. Don't care what someone else says. I, I respect what they say. But when it comes to believing, if it's contrary to God's word, I don't believe it. That's right. Amen. I do not believe nothing but what the God's word said. For man shall live by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. Not just so much of the word. He said all the word. The whole Bible through. Man shall live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Now that's how man lives. That's God's provided way for him to live. And Job was a prophet that lived even before the Bible was written. And notice, he was a prophet, and the word of the Lord comes to the prophet. And then when he wanted comfort, he could find none. He went to his church, and his church didn't, didn't have any comfort for him, but accusation against him. But he stayed until God showed him the word by vision, and then he was comforted. And he stayed on his feet, and the lightning flashed, and the thunders roared. And he said, though the skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God. Amen. Let death or anything else strike me, it doesn't make a bit of difference, because I'll see God. I saw the vision of his word. Israel one day, they was uh, in Egypt, down there in captivity, and they needed a way. They needed a way out of Egypt. And notice, we find out that a man got trained by the name of Moses. He was trained in all the military might. Next Pharaoh to be, down in Egypt. He's trained in all the military might. He thought someday he would deliver his people. And he come out. This mighty man, mighty in word and deed, Moses. And he tried with his military might, but it wasn't God's provided way. He lacked something. But one day, when he was on the backside of the desert, what he lacked, the burning bush had. And Moses yeah. saw a vision of the word. That was God. And when he did, the vision spoke the word. I remember my promise to Abraham, Isaac, and to Jacob, and I remember I promised them, and I've come down to deliver them. Amen. Amen. Oh, my. Then as I spoke the other night at the tabernacle, Moses become a prisoner to God. Unless God can get you a prisoner, Paul become a prisoner. You can't look at what you think. You can't look at what somebody else thinks. You've got to go just what he says to you. are a prisoner. Paul knew that he was pressed in the Spirit to go a certain place when he didn't want to go. He knew that the Spirit forbid him to go certain places. He knew he had to hold his peace at many times. Now a little old fortune teller run out at him one day, uh, hollering around behind him, and Paul, that Spirit of God, he wanted to rebuke it day after day, and finally he got the message, rebuke him, and he turned around. He couldn't do it till God said so. Amen. Amen. Oh, if the church could only be so in the glorious presence of God, someday God will turn loose His power into it. Yeah. Things will take place. Yeah. Yeah. But you can't mix your diet. You'll become a hybrid. Stay exactly what God said. Stay right in the Word. And God will vindicate it to be the truth. Yeah. Yes, sir. God provided Israel a way. He anointed a prophet, yeah. sent a pillar of fire, and vindicated the Word that the prophet spoke by signs, by signs of creation. Moses, go stretch your stick out over the sea, uh, out towards the east, and say, let there come flies. And Moses, a man with the word of God, knowing that a man cannot create, he stuck his pole back towards the east like that and said, let there be flies all over Egypt. And flies created and come into existence by the word of a man. God uses a man for his instrument. He can only speak to man. I am the vine. He are the branches. Right. He said there were no frogs. He said, Moses, go out there and raise up thy stick and call for frogs. That was God's commission to him. And Moses said, now wait a minute, wait a minute. Now maybe the days of that, I never did hear such a thing as that. I better go a little easy. He didn't have any intellectual denominations to tell him what to do. He lived by the promise of God. He was a prisoner in the house of God. He could only go and do as a spirit let him do it. Amen. And he raised up the stick and spoke, and frogs come into existence. Sure, they provided a lamb when they needed something for their sin. God's provided way made a lamb. God's provided way made a way across the Red Sea when they was in a trap. God's provided way provided them a prophet, provided them a pillar of fire to follow them, a vindication of the word, a man proved of God that what he said come to pass. Showed them exactly what it was. 
And yet when they crossed the sea, they wanted a law. <laughs> See, that's just human beings. That's just the way man operates. He wants to inject his own ways. Oh, God's provided way is always a way of sending his word. Death struck Egypt. He was going to kill everything in Egypt. I remember when the boils were breaking out, when the fire was falling, and when the rains come and the hail come, God provided a place for his elect not to get into that. He had a place called Goshen. Now there's coming a spirit of death upon the land, and every man you remember, death is the reason we die. And Israel had to have something to keep them from dying, or death would have struck them too. Yeah. Because of pay- payment of wages of sin is death, and Israel had sin. And God, so that they would not die, his people who were trying to follow him, he provided a lamb and a blood over a door that protected their firstborn. Amen. God's provided way. While Egypt thought they could shut themselves in around all their great theologians and witch doctors and whatever they had, uh, and death angels swept right in over top of that because it was out blood. In any religion today, it hasn't got the blood life of Jesus Christ behind it, the death angels on it. Amen. Right? Amen. Death angel, separated from God. Yes, indeed. That kebab is wrote on every bit of it that hasn't got the blood. You say, well, I'm glad the blood, if the blood hasn't taken effect, if it hasn't taken effect and you see it in your life as a consecrated child of God with what Jesus said would take place, then be careful. You might have something else besides the blood. You might have a little injection of theology in there, some, yeah. a little injection of some sensation. You say, I quivered, I shook, I danced, I did this. Be careful of the medicine ever strikes you. It's good for every human being. It'll save from sin. It'll clean up from a life of sin. It'll make a different person out of you. It'll take the doubt away. It'll make you a new creation in Christ Jesus. Amen. Death struck Egypt. God separated belief from unbelief. That day by the, by the blood upon the door. Moses, a faithful servant who followed every precept of God. When he come to a place he had to die. He's getting so old, 120 years old, he had to die. He had no place to die. He didn't want to die down there, them murmurs and everything like that. God provided him a rock. <laughs> he started climbing until he got above all the unbelief, and God had a rock laying there, and he died on that rock looking to the promised land. That's the place that rock is, Christ Jesus. That points you to the promised land. You get on him one time, and you'll see every promise of God is true. Absolutely. That's right. If if ye abide me in my word and you then ask what you will, it'll be done for you. Because he is the word. It just manifests itself through you when you abide in him. Notice, after he died, he was way up in the wilderness. He needed Paul there. God provided angels. Why? Because no man on this earth could take him where he was going. <laughs> That'd take somebody to pack him over there and it took angels along. along. Enoch. Needed a ladder one day. He walked 500 years with God and to please him. He needed a ladder. God provided him a highway. Walked right up home. Elijah needed a rope one time. And God gave him a chariot with horses to it. Oh my. Samson needed a spear. And God gave him a jawbone of a wild mule. And he beat out a thousand Philistines with it. God provides your needs. God has a way. What if, Sam, what if Samson said, now wait a minute. This jawbone isn't sharp. It isn't a spear. Look at that big thick helmets on them Philistines. He just took God's provided way and beat right into it. That's all you need is to take what God says and go to beat with it. As long as you can, you'll get yourself free after a while. Yes, sir. Yes, Joshua needed a bridge. God provided a, a power, a floodgate, spiritual floodgate that held back Jordan so he could go on and fulfill God's word, the promise. He needed a bridge. Daniel needed a fence to keep the lines off of him. God give him an angel. See, that's God's provided way. What needed? God provided. And God provided in his own way. Now, what if Daniel said, now, wait a minute. I can think of a better way than that pillar of fire standing here before me now. That, that line might not uh, have any effect upon him. He might come right on through that pillar of fire. If you just get me a great big fence and fence me in, see, that would have been Daniel trying to do something. But he just accepted God's provided way, laid down and went to sleep, slept all night, just in peace. God provided a way. Yes, sir. Oh, my, the Hebrew children needed some water. A fire hose down there to put out all that fire when they jumped in there. But God provided them the fourth man. <laughs> yes, sir. That's all they needed. Well, I say, now, wait a minute. There's somebody else to go in there. That won't help. We got to have a fire hose to put all this out. They accepted God's provided way, and he kept the fire off of them. There wasn't even a yeah. 
They went God's provided way. The wise man needed a compass to guide them to the newborn babe, but God provided a star. See, they took the star. That's all they needed. The world needed a Savior. God provided the Son. Amen. Amen. The church needed power. God provided the Holy Ghost. Amen. He didn't provide a book of ethics. He didn't provide a Christian government. He provided the Holy Ghost. That's what God provided. You ever say, go up there and study up in Jerusalem up there until I get a certain amount of education in you until I indoctrinate you so and so? He said, wait until you're in due with power from on high. After the Holy Ghost has come upon you, yeah. then you shall be my witnesses yeah. in Jerusalem, Samaria, and Chicago, Illinois, and so forth. See, yeah. all the world. That is God's provided witnesses, the Holy Ghost. Yeah. God didn't provide a book of ethics. He did not provide a denomination. They said, we want to become full Christians. Well, now, you wait till you study so long. Wait till you learn the creeds. He never said, learn anything. He said, wait till you're filled. Yeah. Amen. Someone said the other day, he said, well, Mr. Brandon, don't you believe in denominations? I said, I've got nothing against the people in them, but I certainly don't believe in their systems. He said, well, why? How would we pay? What would we do? I said, that wasn't God's provided way in the first place. He said, what denomination you belong to? I said, none. He said, what do you belong to? I said, a kingdom. Yeah. Yeah. I said, how do you get in? I said, you're born in it. Amen. You're born into the kingdom of God. How? By the Holy Ghost. He is witness by the word of God that we pass from death unto life because we're in the kingdom of God. That God, God needed a leader for the church. He didn't educate a bishop, neither did he send a high priest or a pope or no one else. But he sent the Holy Ghost. A man dying, their systems die, and everything else, but the Holy Ghost is the eternal God. They cannot die. He gave them an eternal leader, and that is the Holy Ghost. They needed something to guide them, to tell them what to do, how to live, how to meet the public, how to meet the fierceness of the day, how to combat sickness, how to combat this, how to combat sin. Man's got all kinds of ways of joining this and creeds of this and documents yeah. of this and baptisms of this and every kind of sensations and little quivers and funny feelings and everything else, but still remains the Holy Ghost in God's right away for His church. Amen. 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 And the Holy Ghost is God, and God is the Word. The Holy Ghost is this Word made full of vindication. The Holy Ghost is the thing that brings this promised Word to life. You say, I had a feeling. If you don't vindicate this Word, forget that feeling. <laughs> yes, sir. You say, well, I've done this, I've done that, I've been baptized this way, that way. I don't care what you've been done. If the Holy Ghost is on you, this Word is vindicated through you because Jesus said, these signs shall follow them that believe it. To all the world and every creature. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. God's provided way. Two thousand years. That went all right for about three hundred years. Then they had a council meeting one time at Nicaea Rome. And they wanted to inject something. Then after Martin Luther, another angel of God, brought forth the message, then they had a, another injection. And then after John Wesley had another injection. And they just so forth, a council meeting. Until they got this place, until the churches has become hybrid by the ethics of man's teaching. And there's a great falling away now. The church needs a scriptural sign truth. And this last age, it needs something. Look at the different denominations, the twistings, as we close now before we have the prayer line. Look at the twistings of the scripture. Think of our different denominations. Think of our Pentecostal way. Think of our Baptists, our Presbyterian, our Lutheran. Even to our independence. Whatever more. Yeah. Fellow don't know where to stand. Yeah. The church needs today a scriptural vindication. God. What did Jesus say in St. John, the 14th chapter, the 12th verse? He that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also. Yes. The very things that I do shall he do also. Notice, he promised, as it was in the days of Jonas, the prophet, so shall it be at the coming of the Son of Man. See, he said, for as Jonas was in the belly of the whale three days and nights, and was raised up as was from the dead, that'll be a sign to a wicked and adulterous generation. Now, we are living in the last days yes. with a promised sign of the resurrection. 
after 2,000 years have been documenting and drawing off the road and this way and that way to people don't know what to do. But Jesus told them and promised them as it was in the days of Lot and Sodom, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. Compare it today. Take Genesis 6 and look what he said. How the renowned man, how women would get pretty. We got the prettiest group of women that ever was on earth since that time. Women are much prettier than they was years ago. They got so many different things to make them pretty. So many different paints and powders and fixes and hairdos and everything and immoral clothes and things to them make them attractive. A man come to me yesterday. He said, I got a boy 16, Brother Branham. I got a boy 12. I take him on the street. These little strip teases out here. He said, the boys are little males. He said, what can I tell them? I said, sir, I don't know. Take them to Christ. Let them get saved and filled with the Holy Ghost. They'll turn their head to them modern strip teases. Remember, when the sons of God looked upon the daughters of man and seen they were fair, they tuck unto them women. Tuck unto them women. Look over here at this great scandal in England. Look through the United States. Look at these call girls in the UN. Everything else. Oh, it's just terrible. And that's a man renowned. We're right back in that hour. The red lights are flashing everywhere. The coming of the, of the Lord. And Jesus said, as it was before Sodom was burned, so will it be at the coming of the Son of Man. That's right. The women are becoming so, they don't realize what they're doing. An evil spirit upon them. Why would a woman take her toes off like that to expose herself? She don't mean to be bad. They, they, they're just caught in that trap and they don't know it. Just like it was back there in that time. Female flesh being displayed everywhere. See? Very attractive. Runs the sons of God right out of their mind nearly. And then a Sodom and Gomorrah law to protect her from it. What a disgrace. And our government standing for such stuff as that. I wish I could be governor for a while or have this nation ever. I caught a woman dressed like that. She'd go to woman's prison for a lifetime. She'd never be able to. If I caught a woman and a man like that. <laughs> if a woman and a man was caught living like that, they'd both become sterile. That's all there is to it. Perform right out in public by the doctors. Yes, sir, we'd put the penalty. Is it a little, what is law without penalty? The penalty of God's law is death. Sin is death. Yeah. Right. We need a law that's stern. We, oh my, well what we've got now, a bunch of politics can be swayed any way you want to. The whole thing's corruptible. Hurry, church, back to the word of the living God. Live off of that and that alone, because that's what God's people should live by. God promised this church a scriptural sign. He said the resurrection would be reproduced. Jesus Christ and his church will become so they be one in the last days. He promised it. Now we know that it's true. Now he also promised that there will be a restoring of the faith. We read over in Jude that said in Jude, earnestly contend for the faith that was once delivered to the saints. Now we're promised in Malachi 4 by the same system he always did that we would be restored back to the original faith. Oh, Oh my, back to the original seed, back to the seed like it began on the day of Pentecost, back to the same doctrine, word by word, power by yeah. power, Amen. spirit by spirit, the same thing. Yeah. Just exactly like it was about the beginning, through signs and wonders of the living presence of Jesus Christ, after 2,000 years, he's still alive. And he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. I told Billy, 30 minutes, throw something at me and quit preaching. Now, I've done went over that time. Notice, I just get, I know I ha we ain't got much more time. The hour is here. Yeah. Friends, don't just come to the meeting and say, well, I really enjoy it. It's a little hot, but I enjoy it. Don't do that. Be sincere. Move into it. Make confessions. Clean yourself up. If there's little doubts and frustrations in your heart, don't even come in the prayer line. No, sir, I won't clean. Our confessions is a roundabout way. I had a woman on an interview here a few weeks ago, and she said, I found in there where she had a baby, belonged to another man, and she had lived with two boys, and she took this one boy and married him because she liked him better and said the baby was his, and she knew all the time it belonged to somebody else. And she said, I confess that. I said, yeah, here's the way you said it. Oh, dearie, oh, dearie. What if you thought something, oh, dearie? You know, old John, old boy, old boy, what, what if I told you this baby belonged to somebody else? <laughs> you wouldn't believe it, would you? No. Well, what if it did? Oh, I say, John, are we going out tonight to have some hamburgers? That's not confession. Get out on your knees. That's why people come to God. 
Oh, Lord, you're so good, you just let me do anything I want to. Don't you believe that? God's got a law you live by. Amen. So you clean up and wash out and confess and believe with all your heart and come back to the Lord of God. You're still guilty. You can't do that. You've got to tear the thing down. People's got to come godly, sincerely, get on their knees and stay there until the results takes place that that Holy Ghost power of God's love injects into your heart and makes you confess all your sins and all your unbelief and accept Jesus Christ. God has said everything he could. Watch how he proved it the first time, like Brother Bale was saying a while ago. See, how did they know he was Messiah when he seen the woman at the well? He told her what was wrong with her. Quickly, that woman, in that horrible condition, living with six husbands, said, you've had five, and the one you're living with now is not your husband. Six husbands, six men on the string she was running with. In that condition, but when she was told, she seen that the word of God sharper than a two-edged sword, a discerner of the thoughts of the heart. She said, sir, you must be a prophet. Now, the word of the Lord comes to the prophet, see, to reveal these things. Said, you must be a prophet. We ain't had prophets for hundreds of years. But said, you must be a prophet. Now, we know that we're looking for the Messiah. And when the Messiah comes, that's what he'll do. Jesus said, I'm he. And the people of the city, of that entire city of Sychar, every man believed Jesus Christ. He didn't have to do it again. He did it that one time, and every man believed him because the woman said so. Her testimony, she'd been changed so they couldn't keep from believing it. Oh, give us men and women yes. with positive testimonies yes. that will bring men to repentance again. Hallelujah. They believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, by that sign he proved that he was the Messiah. God helped me by the same sign of his spirit to prove that he's still the Messiah. Yeah. Only by the word of God shall we live. His promises that he would do it. Now, accept God's provided way at the end time. If you're sick tonight, God has a provided way. Yeah. Jesus Christ is a provided way. If you're sinful tonight, unbelieving, can't live right, can't seem to get settled down, Jesus Christ is God's provided way. Just believe him. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Then he is the Holy Spirit, which he is. Holy Spirit is Jesus and Christ in form of the Spirit. A little while the world sees me more, yet ye shall see me because I will be with you even in you. The Holy Spirit, Christ called it I. See, Christ, God, the Holy Spirit in him was to be in his church unto the end of the world. God's word in the works that I do shall you also. A little while the world won't see me anymore, yet you shall see me, for I am going to be in you. He that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he also in you until the end of the world. God has a provided way for believing children. Jesus Christ is that way, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Let us bow our heads just a moment. Why do you have your heads bowed? Do you believe that he is the way? Is there some here that would like to believe that and never has accepted it yet? Friend, will you raise your hand and be that sincere here in this old arena tonight and say, Brother Bram, pray for me. I don't want, I, I don't want to meet God this way. And remember, we broke in on a conversation, picking up a phone in a certain place of the day, and a woman had just got in and a man was calling her back and was out with her. And this woman, supposed to be a Christian, and he said, is your husband still asleep? Yeah. Said, if he ever finds out, we would, said, don't make any difference to me. And a little baby crying. Do you realize and you understand this adultery, this dirty, filthy world? She's at the end. God's good. There won't be one building setting by another in Chicago one of these days or nowhere else. God is fixing to rain out that sixth seal upon the earth. Break that seal and turn loose the wrath of God upon the earth. But before he does that, the church will be gone. The bride will be gone. The church won't. She'll go through the tribulation. But the bride will be gone. His little wife won't go through that. Don't you want to be one of the members of her tonight? If you do and want to be remembered in prayer with your head bowed, raise your hand. God bless you. God bless you. 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 Our Heavenly Father, all the words that I can say wouldn't mean nothing 
in comparison with one word you would say. I'm just a man quoting what you said. I pray for these who raise their hands. God grant. That great vision this morning tore me up, Lord. I'm still tore up. And I pray that, that you'll help me. Quiet me, Lord. I'm nervous. And I ask that, that you'll help. If there be these that's raised their hands tonight straight into the building here or by some means, let the great Holy Spirit speak to them now. And may they come sweetly to you. I know the custom is, Lord, call people around the altar. We believe that's all right. But according to the scripture, they said, as many as believe with that time. And I pray, God, that these people rush up for Christian baptism, believing on you and confessing their sins and accepting Jesus Christ and his blood for their pardon. Then rise and be baptized, calling upon the name of the Lord, washing away their sins, and then may they be filled with the Holy Spirit of his promised seed. That life that changes their whole nature gives them a new hope, lets them look only, become a prisoner from any desire, any ambition. Like the great St. Paul wanted to be a rabbi. He wanted to be a great man. He trained, his father and mother trained him to be so. And back there on the backside of that desert, after meeting that pillar of fire that day, it told him, it's hard for you to kick against the priest. Call his name Saul, Saul. How could a pillar of fire call his name? But he said, I'm Jesus. And he knew that's what Jesus did when he was on earth. He knew that pillar of fire was a Christ that led his people out of Egypt through the wilderness. And he knew that that was still the anointed. And Lord, we know you're still the same today. I pray for each one. Give them peace in their hearts, Lord. Sanctify this little church. And they all is connected with it, all the strangers in our gates. For Jesus' sake, I ask it. And then, Father, I pray also that you'll heal the sick. Vindicate what I said to be true. Yes, My time's running out, Lord. I'm getting old, and I pray that you'll help me just to win every soul that I can. God, let the people see tonight that if the Almighty Himself comes down in our midst and proves that He is the same yesterday, today, and forever, may the people see that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Grant it, Lord, and not hybrid Himself with some uh, great infections of. of uh, some disease, uh, germ that brings unbelief in their heart. But may that infection be taken out by the power of the Spirit, that the germ of eternal life might live in them, and they might grow to the full statue of Jesus Christ. That in this last day, that he and his wife would be one. Grant it, Lord. I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, believe me, you people that raise your hand, you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and accept him as your Savior and believe him that his blood and that alone atones for your sin, then I want you to see some of these ministers here for baptism right away. They'll tell you what to do from there. Now for the sick and afflicted, those who have prayer cards, let's start from number one and start and get a few of them up here. I say about one to fifteen. I'm running about 15, 20 minutes late. It should have been out 15, 20 minutes ago. Number one, who's got it? The prayer card number one. Raise up your hand. Everyone has prayer card number one. Stand up, everyone. Who's got prayer card number one? If you can, stand up. We can't see too good here. It's the lighting situation is not good. Prayer card number one, number two, number three, number four, five, six, seven, eight. Our lady here, Holly, you're up yet? One to fifteen. Um, stand up now while the rest of us bow our heads. Come right over here. Come right over here, number one to fifteen, while we bow our heads and pray for this lady. She's sick uh, over here. This is way ahead of here while we pray for her. It's awfully hot in here. Night over. Perspiration just portion out of my shoes. Let's pray now. Hold our heads down. Our Heavenly Father, grant these blessings to us. In the name of Jesus Christ, thy Son. Let grace, mercy, peace help our dear sister, God, as she's sick and needy. Let the Holy Ghost come upon her, Father, and give to her back good health again. She's sick, come to church tonight, won't enjoy it. Here we find her sitting here sick, faint because of the hotness of the heat of the church. God grant her healing. I pray these blessings in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. The Lord, bless now, believe. I see her nod her head in such a way she's to herself now. And now, if somebody wants to take her out where she'd get a little air, it's awfully hot. You just stand right here and know what it, what it means for this time now. Now, the 
Let's see how many you got. One, two, two three, four, five, six, seven. All right. Let's get the prayer line started. Now, everyone, just as reverent as you can. Now, everyone be praying while pianists give us a card over there, if you will. Only believe, only believe. Yes, All things are possible. Only believe. Bless the Lord. Now, everyone, reverently and in prayer now. All right. Now, don't move around no more. Don't, don't you people going in and out. Don't do that. See? Because this is very dangerous. See? Very, very dangerous. All right. Now, everybody, lighten down and pray and believe now with all your heart. Well, if they don't answer to their call, that's all I know. Let's make the call. All right. How many is missing? Two's missing. Number two. Who's got prayer card number two? Is there other speaking people here besides English? Prayer card number two. The boy just mixes those cards up and hands them out. They, anybody gets them. Don't take it if you're not coming. You must come up if you're coming. Don't give it to nobody else. You have to come yourself. Prayer card number two. All right. If it's not here, that's power. It's just awfully hot. Very, very hot. And maybe this lady here has it. Or you got prayer card number two, lady. You got prayer card number two. Maybe she's Norwegian or something and don't speak. Billy, check that card down there. Somebody see if she has number two anymore. Yeah. Now, um, number two. All right. Number one, two. All right. Now. Okay. Now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's about two or three more missing. One to fifteen, if you will. Well, everybody remember now. All right. Now be real reverend. And pray now. How many is going to be praying? Raise your hands. I'm going to be praying. I'm going to be praying. Believe in God. Now, how many out here doesn't have a prayer card? And you know God go to this. Well, he's going to see your hands. You, you believe God? Believe God. All right. Everywhere now. Everyone believe. Just have faith. Don't doubt. Believe God with all your heart. All right. Come. It's kind of makes everybody hurry and excitable. And the spirit of the Lord don't like that at all. See Let's get quiet. See, quiet yourself. Just say, Lord, here I am. I'm here to serve you. I love you. And I know you will grant my request. That's it. Now, can you hear me? I'll try to stand right here. A lady here. Here's a beautiful Bible picture again. Here's a lady that's a colored lady. I'm a white man. It certainly brings out a beautiful Bible picture to you strangers. Jesus met the woman at the well. She was a Samaritan. He was a Jew. And they began to talk. He said, bring me a drink. Went to talking to her. And he found out what her trouble was. But first he asked her to give a drink. And she wouldn't grant it because she was of another race. And he let her know right away there was no difference in races. And here we are tonight after 2,000 years. Now Jesus Christ promised that the things that he did, the believer would do also. Is that right? Now everybody believe that? Amen. St. John, 14th chapter, 12th verse. And now, why? He was the word. Is that right? And he said, if ye abide me, my words in you, ask what you will. Now, if this woman's sick, I couldn't heal her. Nobody could heal her. God's already done it. If she's a sinner, I couldn't save her. God's already did it. She just has to believe it. But now, if Jesus is the same yesterday and day and forever to give an eternal sign of his resurrection in this last days, then he would speak through me if I'm his servant and call for this purpose. Now, all servants are not called to do that. See? But there is, at least in a generation, one that they have that. Now, 
But if this be so, it's to show to the rest of them in your ministry that God is with you. See, he does other things. I have spoken tongues. I don't, I don't do it all the time. I've done it four or five times in my life. I didn't know what I was doing. Hearing myself speaking one day, didn't talk, look around and see what was going on. Heard somebody sound like speaking German. I looked and see where it was. Just me doing it myself. And I thought I could run through a troop and just leap over a wall. Man. But find out it was me. I just kept real still. They got finished. And as the Holy Spirit make intercessions for a woman that later on showed up very, very bad with TB and the Lord healed her. But now here, to this audience, this lady is strange. She's a color lady. And she's somewhere around my age. But I've never seen her. She's just a woman. Now, she's standing here for some reason. I don't know. I, I, I couldn't tell you. I don't know what about her. But if the Holy Spirit can reveal to me what her trouble is, or what she's here for, or, or what she wants, or something like that, or what she has done, or what she ought to have done, or something like that, then and let her be the judge whether it's right or not. Will that convince everybody that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and day for We'll talk to each other just a moment because we'll get quiet to see. The Holy Spirit's very timid. And I just talk to you like our Lord did the woman at the well. Now see, it wouldn't be me because I don't know you. But you see, I'm a body of flesh. Your body of flesh. But inside of me is a spirit and a soul. Inside of me is a spirit and a soul. And then when this spirit inside of me, if it be the spirit of Christ, see, then in a gift that I was born, just like you go to sleep and dream anything, you dream a dream. Well, I see, this five senses has become inactive, and then you're over here and dreaming. And then when these five senses come active again, you're awake. See, because your subconscious is way out from your first conscious. But when they're both right together, you don't go to sleep. You just break over into them. See, you're still in your five senses. You understand? That's a gift. Or the, uh, it's a prophetic gift. That a vindication that Christ is still the same. See, see, we have ministers who's trained in the Word. We have different ones, man like old Roberts, who just lays hands on and shakes the people and say, Bless God, you receive it. See? And he's just one of them burly type. Men. See, that's God's man. Then he has other type that don't do that, but they do something else. All of it is gifts of the Spirit apostles, prophets, and pastors. You believe, you believe God sent me to do that? You do. You thank you, sister. Why do I call you sister? Because when you said that, I felt the Spirit say that's right. Now, you're here, and I see now people can still hear me. The woman's having a sleepless time. She can't sleep. That's right. Very you're getting sick too. You can't hardly eat. You're getting very sick. It's, it, you're afraid it's gallstones. That's right. That's exactly you're right. Sick, nausea, fever. Gotcha. Then you, you're, there's somebody else that you're interested in. That's your, that's your husband. And he has a, a, a kind of a, a nervous, mental nervousness, kind of a real mental nervousness. And he's bothered with some kind of a trouble. He's in, he's trying to get something to, uh, something to, a business deal. It's a pension or something he's trying to get. That's right. A pension he's trying to get. That's it. And then this, I see a little boy. He's about uh, 12 years old or something like that. He's just a little fella. And he's really not your son. He's a, he's a, a you raised him. And uh, there's something you think that he, something went wrong with him. He isn't, he's just a little boy. He'll be all right. It's okay. When he goes back to everything will be all right. Go please. God bless you. I love you. God, you tell me who you are. You, Mr. John, tell me who you are, lady. Miss Ray? That's who you are. <laughs> <laughs> Sonny? It's all right. You mind your auntie? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. She thought something happened, but it hasn't. You're just a little boy. You don't mean to do that. Go ahead, you'll be all right. Amen. <laughs> My, how the Holy 
Holy Spirit would like to break in. How do you do? If the Holy Spirit can tell me what your trouble is, you believe in him with you? You believe for him. You have a, a nervous condition. You have roaring in your head. Oh, going like that all the time. That's right. Then you was examined for a growth. And they found the growth is in the rectum. You believe with all your heart now? Yes. That's right. Yes. On your own, believing, you'll get well. You believe with all your heart? Just have faith, don't doubt. Believe that Jesus Christ is saying yesterday, today, and forever. The younger person that you're here for, no, it's two. You got two daughters, and they both have a like a nervous break. Like, that's right. Lord God, be merciful to them children. You believe if I just if I will speak his word, you believe they'll come out of it? I know. They go receive it. God bless you. Hey. Hey. If thou canst believe, all things are possible. You believe that, don't you? You believe with all your heart? You believe that baby that throat trouble will get all right? I see that woman flashing here and back there and here, and I don't know what was. Sit there praying for a baby. All right, you'll get over it. It'll be all right. Don't doubt it. You believe in the lawyer? You believe in Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever? If the Lord Jesus will reveal to me what your trouble is, you believe in me? You have a nervous condition, complications. Of course, a woman your age, here's the great thing, is a girl. You believe God can tell me where the girl is? It's on your left breast. Is that right? All right. Go believe it, come on. Hallelujah. Have faith in God. Don't die. Seen something blessed happen and something horrible happen. <laughs> Obedience is better than sacrifice, hardening into the fats of rams. Is that right? Lord Jesus, be merciful. My own mind. Obedience. Sincerity and obedience. How the Lord Jesus did something to me. We'll tell you just just believe. Don't doubt. You believe God will heal you there, sister, the little yellow dress on the city? Oh, yes. Okay. So. Aren't you receiving? Just have faith. Don't doubt. Believe. <laughs> Sitting right back there in that second row, Got thrown trouble too, that lady looking right here at me. But you believe in Jesus Christ, make you well? You do? Yes. You had to get it up, get somebody a place to get out. Five minutes more and you'd have been healed. You missed it, but you got it. You can have your request now. Believe you. You believe that God can make you well? You believe God can tell me what your trouble is? You got diabetes. Your husband's here with it too, isn't he? That's right. Go ahead and get it well. Go believe it. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Asthmatic, nervous. Do you believe God can make you well? You believe with all your heart? Let me lay hands on you. Should pass by. In the name of Jesus Christ, may you be healed. Hallelujah. Arthritis. Do you believe that God will make you well? Yes, Or just go say, thank you, Lord. Amen. Oh my, nervous arthritis, some just plead with all your heart. Go on, say, thank you, Lord, for making me laugh.
You know, the blood is where our life is, isn't it? But God can heal anything. Do you believe that? Blood, anything else? It's over. What if I just laid hands on you and said, The Lord bless you. Would you believe you'd be healed? Come through that decision. In the name of Jesus Christ, God, make him well. Amen. Amen. I never seen so many people. This this lady here has arthritis too, and complications, and things like that. That's right. You believe God makes you well? All right. I want to say thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. How many out there wants to believe now? Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Do you believe that the mouth of God said this? The Jesus Christ is God in flesh. We know that. We have no argument about that. He wasn't just a prophet. He was God. God made manifest in the flesh. The last thing he said according to the gospel when he left the earth, these signs shall follow them and believe. If they lay their hands on the sick, they shall recover. Do you believe that with all your heart? Now, how many believers are here? Raise up your hands. All right. Now, I want you to do something. How many here has something wrong with them that they want to be prayed for? Raise up your hands. Now, looks like everyone. Now, here's what you do. You exercise your faith. I'll exercise my faith. And we'll make a union that's getting late. But God. And then, will you pray for the person that's got their hands laid on you? Because they're going to be praying for you. See? You, like, like uh, I, here was someone... They had their hands on me. I have my hands on them. I'm praying for them. They're praying for me. I'm saying, Lord, I am a believer. This lady, this gentleman, this boy, girl, whatever, is suffering. Please, dear God, I suffer. I know what they're going through with. Heal them, dear God. Be deeply sincere. Be deeply sincere. And just pray like that you would want them to pray for you. See? Do to others as you have others do to you. Now, you pray for the person you put your hand on just the way that you want Jesus to pray for you. Watch what happens. See, God's word can't fail. Is that right? It's the truth. It, it just can't fail. Now, now, first thing we do, let's just wait just a moment and confess all of our unbelief. Let, confess all of our sins. Confess all that we've ever done that's wrong. Let's just say, Lord Jesus, forgive me. Let, I want this to be a real meeting where Jesus Christ can be manifested. Jesus Christ can be magnified. Now, while I'm talking to you, just confess everything. Say, Lord, I, I've had a lot of doubts. But right here in your presence tonight, when I, I stand and see the very thing that's totally impossible without you, no one can do that. You'd be ashamed to call it an evil spirit because that's unforgivable. Jesus said so. Call the work of the Holy Spirit that the Bible said he would do. Man, call it an evil spirit. Then it's, then it's unforgivable. See? So you say, I'm standing right here now knowing if they're sitting here, whatever position you're in, knowing that, 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 that you're here, well, you couldn't do these things. And now our brother Brandon, he just has faith to believe that your word is true and he has a gift. I have a gift too, a gift of your love. I have a gift of your spirit in me. I have a gift in me, and in that gift is healing. Now, I'm, I'm asking healing for my sick friends. I'm asking healing, and they're going to ask healing for me. Now, you forgive me of my sins. Lord Jesus, if I've done or said anything wrong, forgive me. Reveal it to me, Lord. I'll go make it right. If you just reveal it and show me what I've done wrong, I'll go make it right. And I pray now for mercy for this audience. Grant it, Lord. Have mercy upon the sick and the afflicted. Those people are here praying. They believe. They've seen you present. I've seen you, Lord. All of us have seen the very evidence of the living God. We far for God. We went so much far, Lord, on the other side, on the hybrid side. Denominations, creeds, big churches, and the cure of the day. We Pentecostals, Lord, have seen you do so much to We just hard ourselves away from you almost. It's, it's pitiful, Father. Forgive us for this thing. We've seen so much as it gradually come up to this until we, well, we, we've just forgotten the blessings, Lord. Forgive us and help us. Will you, Lord? Now have mercy and may the great Holy Spirit that's present now take charge of every believer in here. And now, as your servant, I pray for every sick person here. 
I, I ask you, Lord, to charge the hands that will be laid upon the sick. Uh, let, let the power of the Holy Ghost be upon each one of these men, women, boys and girls, as we're sitting together, Lord. People sitting here sick, Lord, they, they, don't, they come out here to be well. Let them come tomorrow night well. Grant Lord. Please do. Hear my prayer. I, I pray with all my heart that you'll do it. Confessing everything that I know that's wrong. And now I help us. And now let the Holy Ghost take charge. And these people laying their hands upon one another, may that they be made well right now. Granted, Father, through Jesus Christ's name. Now, Satan, I charge you by the blood of Jesus Christ, that all sufficient blood, that through that life that was in that blood that's now in our hearts, we've been changed from what we once was to Christians. We once was doubters. Now we're believers. Our sins are under the blood. He that will confess his sins shall have forgiveness. We have confessed our sins. And we have forgiveness. Now we stand no more. The, our sins are in the sea of forgiveness. We can no more be accused of sin. We have confessed it. We made things right. And now the great chasm that was between us and God has been taken away. God put the sin in the sea of forgiveness. He can never even remember us anymore as sinners. We are no longer sinners. We are sons and daughters. And now we are here for deliverance for the flesh. And because we are believers, the Word said, the Word, the Word that Christ left us, said, These signs shall follow them that believe. If they lay their hands on the sick, they shall recover. Yes. And this is what we are doing. By faith, we are doing it in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, uh, each person in here, lay your hands on somebody by you. Lay your hands on somebody by you. And now say, Satan, I charge thee. I charge thee, Satan. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let loose of my friends. Come out of you. You're the king. My friend is well. I believe. Jesus Christ now makes me well. To honor him, to bring praise. Believe it with all.